how I started in the business. It's, it's a long and crazy process. I started out as a teacher. I'm, I was a professor at De La Salle University. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my professors there is Doy Del Mundo. Uh, Claudualdo Del Mundo Jr., who set up the Com Arts Department in De La Salle University at the time that I was about to graduate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in other words, I am not a Com Arts major, I'm a Lit major. But uh, I, I deliberately designed my college life that my last year would be dedicated to my electives. I left all the electives, I did not touch them. So I had about 18 <laughs> minutes of electives, which I spread out in a year. And I took up com arts courses, and that's why I I had eighteen units of com arts, mm -hmm. okay, under Doy Del Mundo and Hill Portes and the first teachers, the first professors mm -hmm. of com arts. Yeah, so as a result of that, I was so inspired by Doy Del Mundo that I decided to, you know, aside from being a literature teacher, a literature professor, and uh, eventually taking up my masters in education, I said I wanted to be a scriptwriter. And that led to another thing. Okay, I was writing uh, dinner theater, and then uh, Elwood Perez saw my work, okay, in dinner theater, and uh, invited me to work for a film, uh, to write a film for him. Oh, and even before that, the late Kito Kuhungyen saw me and then asked me to write for TV, mm -hmm. and I was writing for BBC Channel Two during that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Elwood Perez picked me up from TV, and from TV I started writing screenplays. My very first screenplay is with Sherry Hill, which is Problem Child. But I had to leave for the States to take up my graduate degree. When I came back, Mother Lily picked me up. And uh, lo and behold, my next movie was with Marilu Diaz Abaya, which is Boys Town, uh -huh. and Lino Broca, which was caught in the act. Uh -huh. Okay, So that's how I met you know, two, you know, two big wigs of cinema at that time, yeah. Marilu and, uh, and Lino. And then I met Peggy Gallaga. Mm -hmm. Okay, through mm -hmm. Don Escudero, and that's how I ended up writing Oro Plata Mata. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one thing led to another, and uh, by 1984, I was given a choice by La Salle to either stay teaching or give my life to film. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just put it this way. In 1984, what I earned in one single teleplay is what I would earn for one month of teaching. <laughs> So I said, okay, I'll put teaching on hold. And I remember, uh, I remember Lita Kebenko, uh, Lita Kebenko, who was my high school teacher in Green Hills before, talking to me and says, when will you come back teaching? So I go, you know, ma'am, I will go back teaching when I can afford to teach. <coughs> and lo and behold, years later, I bumped into her and says, oh, now you can afford to teach. <coughs> so I go, oh, okay. okay. And uh, when La Salle had its centennial, that's when I went back teaching. Ah. Okay, and that's my story of my life. So it's a cycle. Yeah. Now I'm both in movies and I'm, I'm also in the academy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just graduated and I was uh, teaching at the time. I was writing scripts between classes. Would you believe? <laughs> I was uh, in between classes. I was pounding on my uh, on the Olympia typewriter <laughs> in the literature department and in my old Remington uh, typewriter at home. I was a, a fresh graduate at that time. And you first worked in, in TV? Yeah, I did. Uh, in, my in first TV. work is with TV. How did you get into TV? Uh, Kito Kong Yen, who saw my dinner theater play Boys in the Band in Taglish, ah. saw it and says, do you want to write a comedy, a sitcom? I said, because he can, I'll write a sitcom. Okay, and the, the, my first sitcom with BBC2 was called Sandy's Cousin, mm -hmm. okay, with Sandy Antolong, who was being launched at that time, mm -hmm. and uh, Ronald Bregendahl, who is the son of the late Rita Gomez, Gomez. Yes. and then uh, Sina Bengot Pebenito and uh, Manny Castaneda, mm -hmm. who we all dragged in. We were all from La Salle. So we were working on that. Uh, after I teach, we go to Broadcast City to do tapings. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was crazy. It was a crazy setup. And then, from uh, TV, that's where I met you know the other big directors too. I was working very closely with Mario Ara mm -hmm. for a series called Alin Dog, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And if I am not mistaken, there was even one episode which was directed by Lupita Kashiwa, mm -hmm. okay, when she was visited and then she did a TV show. So I was dealing with the big wigs at that time, and I was what I was in uh, was 21, 22, 22, okay. But the real big big break, my real real big big break came when. Uh, El would ask me to do Problem Child, and then from there, I work now with Marilu, and then I work now with Lino, and then eventually with Peke. 
But you finished Problem Child. Yes, I did. Which to this day I have not watched. I have not seen the movie. Kasi nang ipinalabas yung pelikula, I was already in the States. Uh-huh. Okay? So I never got to see my very first yeah. movie as screenwriter. Yeah. Well, because I was fascinated by them. You know, more than their talent, I was fascinated by their humility uh-huh. and their love for filmmaking. Now, why is that? Uh, I've always believed that uh, Broca and Bernal are yin and yang. Mm-hmm. Okay, they were working together. They were contemporaries, but they represented two sides of Philippine cinema. Mm-hmm. Yet, when we were forming the Directors Guild, and these two people would sit across us, they were not acting like demigods. Mm-hmm. They were one of us. Mm-hmm. Um, there are so many anecdotes I have about Broca and Bernal, not only as directors but as human beings. Mm-hmm. And I believe they were most successful as directors and they became national artists because despite not only their popularity but despite the affirmation and honors given to them, they have remained as very grounded human beings. They have remained as very, very grounded and focused Filipinos. Uh, and I can go on and on okay, talking about it. And their influence is not only... Uh, their influence is not only with, with the methodology mm-hmm. of filmmaking or the, the, the content or themes of their films, but their influence is who you are and what you must be uh, to be a relevant and meaningful director. Mm-hmm. It, it's a total package. Mm-hmm. Okay. When I was working with, Bern, uh, with Broca, when we were doing uh, my first film with him, which was Caught in the Act, mm-hmm. I would go, he would ask me to go to his house, which is now in Scout Albano which was across ABS-CBN mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. No? And I, so I, I, I'm not quite sure if his house is still there, but uh, that was his residence uh, until the day he died in Scout Albano. So we would go there, and then we would discuss, and he would always really, he would really laugh at me, because he would say that I'm such a colegiala, <laughs> okay? Because I had this really colegiala view. But I remember one time, it was so crazy, when I was doing the screenplay for him, I, I, I did this really stupid prologue, Okay, of, 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 of a poem by Edna St. Vincent Millay. And I didn't know he loved Edna St. Vincent Millay. And we spent half the time meeting discussing Edna St. Vincent Millay's poetry. Mm-hmm. And which is something so totally, totally crazy, in the man. We had the opportunity of working together abroad. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I remember I just flew in from San Francisco because I did, I did my research for Katie. Okay, the musical mm-hmm. years ago. Mm-hmm. And then he tells me, come, we're going to do a movie in Hawaii. Okay, you meet me in Hawaii. What? I said, I just flew in. I was doing this really crazy movie, this really silly movie called Strangers in Paradise. Okay, uh-huh. with Tom Babakuta yeah, yeah, and yeah, Snooki yeah. Serna. But the thing of it is, I spent about a week, okay, with Broca, and we were together as two human beings. And that's when I learned that he was a Mormon missionary. Uh-huh. That's when I learned how he loved movie. So I, I learned about him as a person. Mm-hmm. Then when you watch him direct, mababaliw ka, mababaliw ka. Because he's, uh, he, he really gets so passionate into the scene. And that's where I learned that, you know, you as a director, you have to be passionate about your what you're doing. It can't be a job. Uh-huh. For Broca, it's a commitment. For Broca, it's a commitment. So that's something which I feel very, very few directors nowadays have. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes me sad because some directors are there because they want to be rock stars. They don't want to be filmmakers. Mm-hmm. You know, they are more concerned with the celebrity involved rather than the responsibility that goes with what has been given to you as an opportunity. Now you go on to the other side and you meet Bernal. Mm-hmm. Bernal is the total contrast of, uh, of Broca. Broca is uh, Misericordia. Broca is Santa Cruz. Uh-huh. Broca is Avenida. Bernal is Malate. Uh-huh. Bohemian she. Uh-huh. He's, he's a Bohemian. He belongs to this intellectual class which does not look down on the masa but understands it. Uh-huh and makes no pretenses about, you know, about being who they are. Um, if you notice, Lino's best films are about the CDE Masa. 
Mm-hmm. But bro, I mean, Lino's best films are about that. Bernal's best films are middle class films. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Broken marriage, mm-hmm. uh, relation, okay. Even City After Dark is a tribute to Malate. Yeah. Okay, it's a tribute to Malate. So, ibang iba sila. I only had the chance of working just once with Bernal. With Paira. Paira and Samar. And it's a crazy situation. We're not supposed to work together. Uh-huh. We're not supposed to work together. I was in Regal to pick up my check, and he was there seated. And then he asked me, um, "What kind of a movie will I give you, Masantos? Do you have an idea?" So I said, and during that time, my my dad was not very well. So I said, "About a woman fixing her life before she dies." So I said, "What do you mean? Uh, what if you know you're gonna die? So you're given a window, and uh, you're try to fix everything before you go." Mm-hmm. So Write it for me. Huh? Yeah. Sabiko, write it for me. Yeah. Sabiko, uh, Bernal, I'm leaving for the States on a vacation in about 12 days. Finish it, sige na. And I finished it before I left. Uh-huh. And that became Pahiram ng isang umaga. And you know what's so strange is out of that accidental meeting, I get my first Puri Yes. Oh, you know, Sabiko, oh, okay, all right. But iba siya, iba siya. But you know what? Over and above that, you know what I remember the most uh, about, about uh, Bernal? The moment my first movie show, as a director, mm-hmm. he calls me up mm-hmm. and congratulates me because mm-hmm. he has seen it. I mean, it's like hindi ba hearing your your idol, your master, going out of his way to call you up mm-hmm. to tell you na congratulations. I really love it. You know, something I love this. It's a trilogy, kasi, and I'm quite even embarrassed by that film when I look back now on my first movie. But you know, to 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 hear somebody who is your teacher tell you that it's affirming, and I learned that I learned how important it is for the community of filmmakers that you have to give credit where credit is due. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I remember, I, I remember, I remember uh, one incident during the DGPI meeting. People were saying we're branding as the next Bernal. Yeah. Sabi ko, I find it so stu- stupid because I write about the middle class. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Sabi niya, sabi sa akin ni Bernal, you know what, Joey, there is no next. Okay, you're the first Joey and I'm the first Bernal. Okay? Uh-huh. Sabi niya, I mean, I find it silly. Sabi ko, I'm sorry that they're saying that. Sabi niya, oh, parang they're putting a, you know, they're parang, they're parang putting an obituary na uh-huh. to him, but you, there's somebody else, which is not true. And I, I keep saying that now. Okay. Even as, uh, now that I have, uh, now that I am relatively the veteran filmmaker, I've learned that from Bernal. You should be happy that there's a next generation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or as others are threatened, mm-hmm. you should be affirming. And that's why I, I came back teaching. Mm-hmm. Because there's no greater joy than to see that there's going to be a better filmmaker after you. Yeah, yeah. That I learned from Bernal. Uh-huh. So they were also directors who, who cared for other directors. Of course, yes. Yeah. Which is what we lack right now, the kind of leadership that Broca had, mm-hmm. the kind of fire that Bernard had. Broca was out there in the streets mm-hmm. fighting, the, fighting martial law. Mm-hmm. Okay? He opened the gates to uh, Filipino directors or Filipino cinema to be accepted in Cannes, mm-hmm. to be respected in Europe. He opened these gates. Yeah. Without Broca, yeah. there would be no Brillante, there would be no love. Uh-huh. Because he made, he, 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 he placed Philippine cinema on the map. And he's doing that not for himself, he was doing that for the industry and for the country. Mm-hmm. With, the case of, with the case of Bernal, uh, he opened his doors to young filmmakers. A lot of the people who are directing now were assistants of Bernal. Oh. Okay, there is Ma Alejandre, Reyes Ruel Bayani, these are all the anak-anakans of Bernal. So, in other words, it's, it's a continuum, it's a continuous process, and we, we learn that from the national artists. Uh-huh. In the same manner that later on, too, remember Peke was in the team of Bernal. Oh, Bernal, yeah, for Manila Baina. Yeah, Manila Baina, he was the production designer of Bernal. So, it, there's a continuum, diba? there's a continuum taking place, and that chain must not be broken. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that was so well started by Broca and Bernal. Do you think both of them were also teachers in their own way? Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Going to their set is attending a master class. Going, going to their set is attending a master class. Um, I have seen Broca direct. I was on the set 
when he was directing some of my films that I wrote for him. I was on the set when he was directing Jida Alhar in Caught in the Act. Mm -hmm. I was on the set when he was directing Avilma Santos in Aida Makarae, mm -hmm. which is I, I wrote for him, you know, uh, adultery. Okay, so yeah, he kita ko how 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 he handles actors, how he handles. It. Broca is an actors director. Mm -hmm. Okay, he would be very very nuanced and particular about the actor more than the technicals. Contrast it with Bernal. Bernal as a uh, is a director's director. Uh -huh. Okay, Bernal said I. I had the opportunity of appearing in a Bernal movie because his actor did not show up, oh. okay, and he needed somebody to appear, okay, in that movie. So he called me up and I, I, I showed up and I did the scene for him and I saw the way Bernal worked, which is very different from the way Broca also worked, diba? So, you know what? One thing I learned about my three inspirations, Broca, Bernal, and Peke, mm -hmm. they're all teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're all teachers. With Peke, I learned methodology mm -hmm. and how to run a production. Mm -hmm. How to, uh, you know that, Jerry. Yeah. The methodology, the kind of discipline that Peke instills in his people. Mm -hmm. I learned from Broca how you deal with actors, mm -hmm. how you motivate actors, and uh, how you bring the actors to the context of the scene. And with Bernal, how to make it much larger. How your movie, how a scene is more than just a scene, but a context of a much larger message in the narrative. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did they require you uh, to go to the set? No. The Although there are times that they would request that I be there because there is a scene which they want me to to, to check or to correct. Uh, it's different when you write a script and then when you go to the set and you see the physical the physical elements of the set which may not work with what is written. Those are the only times that I would go. I always feel to say that you know, there's a writer hanging around being an obstruction. I, I feel that you know I'm disturbing people because there are enough people on the set than for me to be an extra body, niba. Right? Uh -huh. But when, uh, but there are times they would ask me to go because merong, uh, there's something about the scene that they want to check. That's the time that I would go. Well, there are various kinds of writers. Okay, uh -huh. there are uh, there are uh, directors who are very much now. Rather, there are various kinds of directors. There are directors who writers love, and there are directors who writers hate. Okay, mm -hmm. they are called the writer killers. Okay, uh, what I love about both of them, about Broca and Bernal, is they respect your 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 job as a screenwriter. They respect your job. As a writer, in as much as you respect, you know their duty as directors. Mm -hmm. In other words, they give you leeway. Mm -hmm. Okay, you sit down, you discuss a story, but after that, okay, we agree on this. Okay, go write it. Mm -hmm. You know, during that time, wala pa mga creative committee. Uh -huh. Okay, you don't have a staff of about twenty people breathing down your neck. Okay, analyzing your script even before the director shoots the first frame uh -huh. of the movie. Uh, during that time, there was greater liberty for the artistry of both the director and the writer to come out. And that was why movies before were so different from one another. Uh -huh. And that was why, you know when you watch a movie, ah, that's a Broca, ah, that's a Bernal, ah, that's Chitoronio, ah, that's Joel Lamangan. But nowadays, movies are like Jayco Donuts, <laughs> diba? They're all the same rom-com, hugot movies, hindi ba? They're all the same because now there's somebody controlling the content, controlling the style, and the director, you know, the director has very, very little room, okay, to express himself or herself. That's why it's a marvel. It's really a marvel that you still have the Antoinette Hadaones and the Dan Villegases, mm -hmm. who really create very original works mm -hmm. despite the restrictions, mm -hmm. okay? And you could see naman ngayon, you know, without naming the titles of movies, even though you say, oh, it's such a great movie. But I've seen this before. Uh -huh. Diba? It's just that it's treated differently, but it's the same story. Okay? And nowadays, you, you know, who cares who directs the movie? Because they all look the same. Yeah. Diba? But during our time, during the, the time of, uh, of Marilu, Mel, Chito, it's iba. Hello. That's why when Chito Ronyo came out with this movie now, Signal Run, yeah. it's so different. Yeah. Because you see, ah, Chito. Yeah, yeah. See? 
Broca and Bernal started that. Why? They gave credibility to directors to find their own identities. I remember Mother Lily saying once, I really find it funny. Because Mother Lily gives you a project, bahala ka sa buhay mo. She'll watch it when it's finished. Okay? That was before. I remember Mother Lily, I was working with, with, with Broca at the end of the movie. So really mother, I don't pull up I was just really laughing. Because she gave a free hand to me and Broca to, to, to write whatever it is and to do whatever it is that we did. Not anymore. Because uh, filmmaking nowadays, look, studios before like Sampaguita, LVN, Regal, even Viva, they were mom and pop businesses. They're mm -hmm. run by families. Mm -hmm. Okay? But now, with multimedia corporations, okay, Still, it's run by a family, but there's so many layers and so many businesses attached and interrelated with one another. In other words, it's a business. Mm -hmm. During the time of the studio system, even in the 50s, and during the time of, 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 of Viva and of, at the height of Regal, okay, we don't have focus groups, <laughs> you know, watching your movies and seeing if it's going to work. You don't have creative committees. Uh, creative committees are fresh graduates who are brought in by the uh, by by the studio so that they can comment on the script and script development. You don't have that anymore. Even in Hollywood, you know, they're doing that now because it's become a business. Uh -huh. Well, filmmaking has always been a business, but now it has become a more expensive and risky business. Okay, um, I'm now part of a creative. I'm a creative consultant of a studio of Regal. So I read all the scripts and I also critique, okay, you know, I watch rushes and all that. And I know some directors must hate me mm -hmm. for doing that. But then you're doing that now because of the amount of money invested and how hard it is for it to come back as a business. Mm -hmm. It's become more dangerous now. Oh, example. Remember when Oro Plata Mata was made? Mm. It cost 2 million pesos. Nowadays, that's not even an indie movie. Yeah, yeah. Because an indie movie would cost from 3.5 to 4 million now. So you could see that, oh, okay, that's that's the risk taken in. All right, we we keep criti criticizing. I, I, I keep asking myself, would Broca and Bernal exist in the present system of creative committees? I think not. Yeah, yeah. I think not. Uh -huh. You know, they would rather, you know, take up culinary arts <laughs> than to be subjected to what directors are being subjected to. Uh, yeah. Broca was working until the very end, but he was really he was really having such a hard time, okay? Because he had rise na this new system we have right now was slowly rising mm -hmm. at that point, mm -hmm. and then Bernal had a really big gap of not making any movie because he went into advertising. When I remember, in one of the of the directors killed me, he says, "Oh, Bernie, what are you doing now? Eto, I'm the I'm the king of tides." You <laughs> pala kasi, oh, he's com he's the commercial director of all the tide commercials. I'm the king of time. So, laugh na lang kami. Uh, do you know we were supposed to do a movie when he died? Oh? Yeah. That was supposed to be our second movie. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He wanted to do a movie with Nora Onor. Okay. He wanted to do a, a, a romantic comedy with Nora Onor. This was mid-90s. Yeah, mid-90s. And we were meeting. Okay, It's for Regal. Okay? Uh, but that movie came alive years later. Okay, It's an anecdote. Okay, so, Brock and I were talking, okay, let's do a movie about a couple who are getting married, but then, visit the visit sila, it's a marriage, okay, it's a study of marriage in the Philippines, of wedding in the Philippines, eh? visit the visit sila, in the end, nagtana na lang sila. Mm -hmm. Naka motorbike sila nagtana. Sige, we're working on that, then he died. Years later, ABS-CBN, Star Cinema approached me and asked me if uh, I'd like to do a movie with Julian and Ryan. So I said, sige. Uh, I have this old story which is supposed to be a story I wrote for Bernal. Uh, maybe we can work on that. Okay, so it's about, you know, this couple who's getting married, and then, uh, they sa family nila, they decided to elope. Ah, maganda, maganda, maganda. Okay, fine. So I'm gonna do that finally. I'm gonna write the script. And then they thought, <coughs> we have a title. Mm -hmm. Okay, we bought this script. We don't like, we don't like the script, but we like the title. Okay, so why? Pan ba yung maganda? Hindi, we own the title naman eh. Okay, what's the title? Kasal, Kasalo, Kasalo. Yeah. Sabi ko, teka muna eh, my story is only Kasal. Okay? So sabi ko, it will not work. So sabi niya, how are you gonna do? Sige, I'm gonna do a part two and a part three. 
which is the kasali portion and then the kasalo portion. That's how it came to be. Because hit. Oh, it became yeah. Well, well, it's one of my it's one of my better and more recognized works, and that's because a third of that is Bernal. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, a third of that is Bernal. Well, for th yeah, how uh, how I survived for three reasons. Number one is that uh, I never rested on my achievements in the past. I always believe that kapag may na nagawa ka na tapos ka, okay, it's done. If it's condemned, learn from it. If it's appreciated, you know, be grateful, but never think that you know that's it. Okay, that's going to be the ultimate benchmark of who you are. You have to evolve because the world is changing. Your audience is changing. Mm -hmm. You cannot be the same person you were five years ago as a filmmaker because the audience has changed tremendously. Mm -hmm. In five years, you know, the audience would have you know would have, would have you know morphed into something else. Secondly. Uh, I don't want to get bored. You know, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. Years ago, I did a movie called May Minamahal, which is the grandmother of all com of all rom coms. Yes, yes. Okay. After that, they make me, I make great, same, same, same rom com. It, you know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you get pigeonholed. Ah, uh -huh. rom com director. So what if there comes a point in time in which rom coms are no longer acceptable? So you you'll be pigeonholed two together. You you don't grow, but you just become part of a trend, hindi ba? Uh, and I've seen some directors, very good directors, who are pigeonholed into one kind of movie. So I did live show, which of course rattled the world that you know oh, the director of Mame Namahal did you know, but yeah. people consider us born, hindi ba? No, it's because you rattle them. You just you tell them that you know I'm a filmmaker. I'm not a rom com director. Right? And then last is I love to teach. And that's why I came back teaching. Because I want to know my audience. I want to know my If I lock myself up in my room and started cross-teaching, okay, I will not know life as it is. Hindi ba? Uh, not unless you finally resign to yourself that, okay, I'm going to wait for the angel of death to pick me up. That's the only time I'm going to lock myself up in a room and wait for death. But I'm not going to do that. I said, you know, I'm going to... If ever I choose to die, I'm gonna I'm gonna die laughing, okay. and at work. Okay. What really saddens me is the fact that a lot of even film students do not know Rock or Bernal. That's why we're doing this project. It's so sad. Uh, a lot of media people, a lot of media kids, you know, those are, are 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 weaned by television. Mm -hmm. They think the ultimate concept of drama is maalala mo kaya. Okay, uh, and it cannot be helped because that's what they are exposed to. And what really saddens me is even film students do not watch Philippine films. Exactly. Okay, they they, they base their, their their idea of you know they're the pretentious ones who go to you know European cinema, French Jewish film, or and they're the really the really palasak ones who think that you know yeah, who think that uh, Transformers is. Uh, is a is great filmmaking, whereas for me it's nothing but a thrill ride in Enchanted Kingdom, right? So, and then you ask them, you know, how many of you have watched it? Oh, halos wala. Lekia asked them, how many of you watched uh, Excess Package? Okay, in a class uh, in Maine, no? in a class of about twenty-five students, there's one. So, what do you watch? Uh, they watch things in YouTube. They watch things in. in but you know. Where is the cinematic yeah. experience, right? But maybe, maybe, Jerry, that's change. Uh -huh. Maybe there will come a point in time in which cinema will be diminished to the small monitor mm -hmm. of a computer screen. Or the phone. Or the phone. Maybe that's change. But the thing of it is, change is not only in the technical, but change is also be in the content. Mm -hmm. But change can only have relevance if you know the tradition from where it came from. Yeah. Anything without a sense of roots, that change is very amorphous and meaningless. Mm -hmm. uh, change must be organic to where you came from so that you know exactly where you want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, change cannot be for the sake of change. And that's why I feel a sense of tradition, just knowing Broca and Bernal, Hindi pa nga mga Jerry De Leon, hindi pa nga ang mga Manuel Conde, hindi ba? 
These are all necessary to know who you are as a Filipino filmmaker. Yes. When you, when, look, when you watch Bernal's relation or mm -hmm. broken marriage, mm -hmm. you realize that that's timeless. Regardless of whatever generation you have, you'll always have those marital, social, middle class problems. Okay, when you watch, uh, when you watch, Tinimbang uh, Kang Unit Kulang, the the turning point movie of Broca, which brought him, okay, to, to the college students, you see that the issue is still the same. The hypocrisy of Filipino mm -hmm. society is still the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you watch Ora Pronobis or when you watch uh, Bayangko, okay, you find out that the issues there are still very much more than ever the same, okay? And uh, when you come to think of it, yung mga pinaglalaban ni Broca and Bernal, okay, in the 80s, are the same things that people are beginning to fight for again, okay, in, in 2018, yeah. di What we're going through right now is seemingly a flashback of 1986, uh, exactly. okay? So what they were talking about at that time is so relevant to who we are right now. But you know what is so sad? It showed that in the distance of all these years, we did not grow. We did not grow. How sad that we did not learn these lessons, that we have to keep on repeating the same subjects because we did not grow. We did not learn from our mistakes. Oh. Well, there are two kinds of artists. Naman talaga. One is the artist who has social commitment, mm -hmm. and one who is the artist who, who lives in his own dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, you say, uh, is one better than the other? No, they, 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 they're, they're, they're both the same. Okay, it just so happened that Broca and Bernal are, uh, are committed artists, they're socially committed artists. Uh, Broca is more political, Bernal is more social. Okay, she deals with more with social and uh, sociological issues, uh -huh. but uh, Broca is downright raw, di ba? Kaya nga eh, yin and yang, mm -hmm. yin and yang. Mm -hmm. They both deal with the same kind of criticism, but on different levels. Mm -hmm. And there are artists who just couldn't care less. Uh -huh. Okay, there, there are artists who, are, who just want to improve their craft and art. There's nothing wrong with that either, okay? Uh, does that mean that they are any less in terms of talent? No, it's just that their persuasion is different. But does the socially committed artist necessarily point to somebody who's a socialist or a communist? No, he's a nationalist. Okay? And being a nationalist, you know, makes you a nationalist. For instance, think you Eddie Romero is a national artist, mm -hmm. but he was committed to the craft of filmmaking. You cannot say that Eddie Romero's movies have that same passion of a nationalist issue. No, he was just a brilliant filmmaker. Okay? But when you look at the works of Gerard, of Jerry De Leon, okay, or even Manuel Conde, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they were critics of society. Okay? They were critics of society. Oh, example. National artist Ronaldo Reyes, otherwise known as Fernando FPG. Poe Jr. Yeah. He was dedicated to craft, but when you really study carefully the original intention of Ang Panday and of Provinciano, they were social criticisms as well. Okay? So, it's anything goes. Eh? I, I think the worst kind of director is the director who's just there because he wants to be a rock star. Okay? Uh, na, wala siyang commitment to his art, okay? or wala siyang commitment to his society. He's, he just wants to flaunt his camera. Okay? That's bad. Just for the glitz and just for the glitz and glamour and uh, to have your name recognizable. Ew. Okay. Well, very they, they they approach it very differently. Okay. Let me start with with Broca. I think Broca's seminal woman character would be Insham. Okay. Uh, Insham was a woman who fought back. Okay. Insham was a woman who refused to be uh, to be enslaved. <coughs> Okay, by the sexual dominance of the male. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would be Broca. Mm -hmm. I with Bernal and Dami. Okay, that whole spectrum of women in City After Dark represents the various kinds of women in the in in in, in the underbelly of Manila. There was the lesbian Sherry Hill. Mm -hmm. There was the blind masseur in Rio Loxin. Mm -hmm. Okay, there was the uh, abused. Uh, woman in the person of Lorna Tolentino, the waitress, and there's this fake nurse who was a call girl in Alma Moreno, and then there's the colegiala portrayed by Gina Alhar. Spectrum! 
Of the, to Solis. And then Charito Solis as this nervy mother. Okay? Then you have all the Vilma Santos characters he created with, uh, with, with Boyette De Leon, Christopher De Leon. You have her in uh, Broken Marriage and you have her in Relacion. So, between the two, um, it was Bernal who was really more of the woman-centered director. Okay? Because with Broca, it's more of issues. Eh. Broca had Cain and Abel and all that sort of stuff, but he's, he's, I know, he's, he's, he is not more as centered in women in terms of you know, as, 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 as Bernal. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, I think Bernal is one of the first feminist film directors that we've had who really changed the perception of the woman, of the Filipina, not as a character that is not hindi lumalaban. Mm -hmm. Or Martina Sawa. Yeah, oh, yeah Martina Sawa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the best example of that would be Lino Broca, how he changed the whole Dolphy iconography uh -huh. of the gay in Tatay Kung Tatay. Tatay. Before that, Dolphy was Pacifica, Falay, Fai, Ifa, Falak, Falak, Fak. Hindi ba? Hindi ba? Hindi ba? Oh, hindi ba? So, iba yon. Then when he made them in... You know that Tatay Kung Nanay is the first, one of the first gay movies that showed a flamboyant gay as a human being? Yeah. And not merely as a clown or the, or the village idiot? He did Tubog sa Ginto, which was way ahead of its time, yeah. which was a, a, a study of, 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 of a clandestine relationship between a gay married man and the driver. Yeah. Okay? So, he was really ahead of it. And now, oh, I think with, with Bernard, it's evident too. The lead character of City After Dark was Bernardo Bernardo, Bernardo, Bernardo. who is gay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Oh. And I think <coughs> one of the most interesting gay characters created by by Bernal is that portrayed by Len Santos in uh, in Broken Marriage. Na may alaga na ano yung yung bading na may alaga. Talagang you 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 really you know, laugh like crazy. Or even even in even in in even in his uh, frolic some movies like Galaw Gaw of mm -hmm. of Bernal. You have a character portrayed by Manny Castaneda mm -hmm. you know, as Hias, mm -hmm. hindi ba? Who was, a, who was a caricature of a caricature? Mm -hmm. In other words, yeah, yeah. He, he, he elevated okay, the stereotyping into something else which is more intellectual and more, how shall I put it, how more deconstructed ahead of its time. Very much so, but both have been dark. Like, hindi ba si, ano, si Brock has always been nga, the old Manila. Mm -hmm. Well, both dealt with old Manila, mm -hmm. okay? Except for one movie of Bernal, which is also seminal, which I'll talk about in a while. Broca is Avenida Rizal, Broca is Quiapo, Broca is Misericordia, Broca is Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. Bernal is Malate. Mm -hmm. Across the river. Uh, across the river. Broca are the, the people of the streets. Funny part about it is I was shooting in Santa Cruz just last week. And I saw this, I thought, this is really Broca territory. <laughs> okay, really Broca territory. As contrast to, let's say, uh, Bernal, which deals with Los Indios Bravos, okay, which deals with the Remedio Circle, uh, the intellectual, the Bohemians, hindi ba? And I remember, God, hindi ba, in the 80s, Penguin Cafe uh -huh. and all that, yes. Remedio Circle was a cultural hub. It was not a bunch of Korean restaurants, hindi oh, yeah, ba? That was a <coughs> that was a glory period yes. of Manila at that time when Malate became the the cradle yeah. of uh, of of Bohemian and, and, and intellectualism and whatever. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so they, you, from across the river, they, they they captured you know they captured two sides of Pasig River. But remember, it was also Bernal who captured the the, the first glimpses of Ayala in Working Girls. Ayala, yeah, that's true. Oh, oh. So, in other words, he was showing the two sides of Manila and then what was growing is the next hub, which is Working Girls, mm -hmm. okay? When, when you see the, the very first version of Working Girls, the opening scene is Ayala <laughs> Avenue. You will really, wow! That's how Ayala Avenue looked like, okay, in, 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 in the 80s, in the early 80s. It's Bukid, okay, where all the hotels are now and the buildings are now. It was a different Ayala, and at that time, that was already cosmopolitan Manila. Strange, strange. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe my homage to Broca would be a movie, a, a very small movie that very few people have <laughs> watched, but one of my favorites, which stars Ricky Davao and Carlo Aquino, and uh, Ana Capri and Jacqueline Jose. It's called Minsan May Isang Puso. It's about a baker and an orphan boy. 
it was done by the Eagle Indian, about 20 people watched it. Okay? <laughs> but it's, a lot of people feel that it's, I mean, a lot of people say it's one of my better works and it's really one which is closest to my heart. I wouldn't say that live show is my tribute to Brock. Yeah, I thought that would be... No, uh, that would be, well, that would just be a movie because I wanted to make a social statement. But I think uh, my idea of, uh, of, 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 bro of my, my homage to Brock would be Minsa May Sambuso. With Bernalo a lot. I think my ultimate tribute to Bernal is Casal Casali Casalo. Because it's his movie. Okay, one third of that is meant for him. I wrote it for him. So, uh, it's so strange that now, as we talk, Star Cinema wants me to do the third of the trilogy, which is Asawa Asiwa Asalto. But I'm not sure anymore if we have an audience for that. Okay. Oh, with all the Hugot movies that we have in Diva, I'm not sure if the audience still wants to go into the autumn of a marriage. Okay. <laughs> but these whole good movies, weren't they what also Bernal uh, was trying to do also? Trying to deconstruct a uh, relationship and how it, it, the it, dynamics it, they, they were, but you know, there's a substantial difference between the two. Okay? And I'm not looking down at the new who got movies. Huh? Uh, Bernal's movies dealt with more mature people. Okay? They dealt with more mature people in terms of relation and broken marriage. Okay, these are the, his talky movies. Mm -hmm. There's another one, Hinugut Kasalamit, <coughs> which is not about a relationship, but it's about uh, faith, yeah. okay? About about faith and reason. Um, the whole good movies we have now are very derivative of uh, Richard Linklater, Jung before midnight yeah. and all that sort of, you know. Uh, and I guess it's relatable to an audience which is really trying to uh, trying to justify why relationships have become so brittle mm -hmm. and why relationships have become so transient. Mm -hmm. um, kids endlessly try to explain their feelings. And that's sad. <laughs> We're not even having to explain your feelings, what? explaining how you feel. And you know why? You only do that because you're isolated. You don't have to explain how you feel if you're connected with somebody. Mm -hmm. But if the connection is how shall I put it? Uh, if the connection is not true, if the connection is synthetic, you end up having to explain everything. And I see that in all the so-called romance movies now. Oh, people explaining themselves all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> uh -oh. It's because parang, you know, that's my only way of communicating with you. In, in, in a world where every relationship has practically become virtual, it's so hard to be real. Ang ganda ng line ko. <laughs> it's so hard to be real, and you 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 keep explaining in order to be real. Tawa ko na tawa. Lahat talaga na relationship, lahat talaga na mga hugot mo. These are about failed relationships, hindi ba? Sabi ko, my God, can't we have a happy ending here somewhere, hindi ba? I think you know it. It is important to know to embrace the works of Broca and Bernal for a very simple reason. You know, without the past, you will never understand today. Mm -hmm. And without understanding today, then you have no future. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Um, tradition can never be, in a world of dispensability, in a world where everything is replaceable and dispensable and digital, uh, without a sense of what came to be, you will never know what can possibly be. Yeah. Uh, what is so sad about Filipinos is that we do not give premium to tradition. If you look at all the great cultures in the world, they achieve their greatness because of their reverence for tradition. Uh, sad to say for Filipinos, we think that by moving forward, what you have to do is to forget the past. We have such short memories that it has become a political and historical disaster. And as it is, it's also proving to be a cultural disaster as well. So there is a need to go back and appreciate, understand, but more so embrace you know, great national artists like Jerry De Leon, like Manuel Conde, 
like Ronaldo Reyes and especially Broca and Bernal. 